everyone and welcome to the Oaklers YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're making the Caravan Tote and Pouch from Noodlehead. So this pattern actually comes with two projects, a really, really gorgeous tote. I'll show you that first. This tote is so much fun to make. There are so many options for this tote. Pretty much all of them are optional. Okay, I'm going to show you. There's a lot of pockets on here, so you can make this tote very simply, very quickly, or you can do, you know, the elaborate tote like I did. So this tote has this front pocket right here with the little snaps. Now I'm using magnetic snaps that I have with my cam snaps press for this. You could also use those fashion snaps or those plastic cam snaps, or you can just leave off the snaps entirely on this pocket. On the top, we have a contrasting panel, and then on the bottom, we have our main panel. So use a really fun fabric for that or keep it super basic. You can make this a very fun, exciting bag like mine or very simple, very chic. What I think is really cool on this bag is we have this huge zipper right here in the front. Open it up, and on the inside, you have another pocket. It's a pocket in a pocket. It's like a box in a box. It's a pocket in a pocket. This is a really big pocket. You can put a lot of stuff in there. And then you have this like slip pocket here that you can add a bunch of divider stitches. So we're gonna switch up this pocket just a little bit in the tutorial today, but I want you to have fun with this. There's a lot of fun ideas. This front pocket, this interior pocket right here, totally optional. I would say if you're not going to do all the extra pockets, definitely do the front zip pocket. The front zip pocket is also optional to be completely honest. You could make the front of your bag exactly the same as the back of your bag. So you could keep this a very, very basic, simple tote. But if you're new to bag making, if you're a beginner, I do suggest you try this zip pocket right here because this is an easier zip pocket to do. And it's going to be a great way to learn how to work with zippers. So on the top of the bag, we have two straps. Once you open it up, the top is closed with a magnetic snap. And then on the inside, we have this wonderful slip pocket. Now in the pattern, this slip pocket has some grommets on it. It seems like from reading the pattern, this bag, the intention of this bag is for like a knitting or crocheting bag. So we have needle pockets on the inside in this big zipper here. And then we have like a place for our yarn and you could feed the yarn through the grommets. So that's a really, really beautiful way to make a bag for the knitter or the crocheter in your life. This would also be just like a great everyday tote bag. I know a lot of us like to make bags like this for grocery stores. You could put a false bottom on the bottom here just to keep it super, super flat. This would be fantastic for that. So I do encourage you to really play with this pattern. Leave off what you know you're not interested in. If you just really don't want to deal with the flap and the top stitching, then just leave it off. That's fine. This front pocket here, though, really gives this bag a lot of character. So I do encourage you to do that because it also coordinates with the pouch. So now let's talk about the pouch that comes with this pattern. Look at this adorable pouch. This pouch is so cute. It also has that little front pocket. Look how cute it is. So on this front pocket, I actually use the cam snaps, which I'm a big fan of, and I use them with my rivet press. So we have a nice little pocket right here. The pouch comes together very quickly. There's not a lot to it. It's just the pouch and this little front pocket. So we have the top zipper up top, nice and big. No pockets in the lining. You could definitely add one if you wanted to. So I am going to say this is very beginner friendly, especially if you use the right material. If you're a beginner and you want to make this pouch, this bag, use quilt cotton and just interface it with some woven interfacing. That's how the pattern is written. I use some wax canvas for these front pockets and also for the top right here coordinating panel. And I also used waterproof canvas for the lining. Now using those types of material does make it thicker and a little bit more challenging to sew. So if you're a beginner, use lighter weight fabric, skip whatever pockets you're not interested in working on right now, do the bare minimum. If I was a beginner, these are the two things I would really try. I would try this zipper pocket right here and I would try this front pocket also. Maybe use some plastic cam snaps. Maybe don't use a snap at all. Just leave this as a flap. It's totally fine on its own. But that's what I would try first because you're gonna develop a lot of skills just with those two things. And then, I mean, once you make one, you're gonna wanna make more. The pouch also is a fantastic beginner pouch. So for all the beginners out there, I hope you love this one. For all of you pros, I can't wait to see what you do with this pattern because I envision this in like super thick vinyl. I mean, the design of this, so if you did like a quilted vinyl on the bottom, 
a really nice chic black top, something like that. Like you, you see where I'm going with this. There's a lot, a lot you can do with this pattern. I'm so excited to see your version. So thank you so much to Needlehead for allowing us to film tutorials using your patterns. We are all such huge fans of Needlehead patterns over here. I cannot tell you how many emails I get telling me what bags they're making from you, how much they love your patterns. If you haven't already checked out their website, make sure you go check out the link down below. Tell me what other patterns we should be making. There are so many Noodlehead patterns on my list. I cannot wait. There's like a, there's like the backpack. There's two backpacks actually. There's like the Sandhill Sling that I wanna make and then there's the other one, I can't remember, but it's like a very, very chic backpack. I'm so excited to make those ones. If you're new to YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, anything at all you want to say, leave them down in the comment section. There will be timestamps for every single piece of both of these bags today. So check the comments. At the very, very top will be a comment from me, and there will be timestamps for each piece. Remember, there's two projects here, so you're going to have a lot of timestamps. If there's just one thing you're looking for, go click on the number next to that timestamp, and it'll take you straight there in the video. All right guys, time to roll up the sleeves and get started. Okay, so for the lining in this pattern, you're gonna need about two yards or more. Now she breaks it down into a lot of different pockets and how much you would need for each one of those pockets in each section. I'm gonna mix it up and I am using waterproof canvas for the majority of the lining. I'm actually using this quill cotton only for the binding on a pocket, so I'll show you that. But everything else in the lining is going to be waterproof canvas. For the contrast, I'm using this beautiful wax canvas. You need about a half a yard of that. And then for the main vinyl on the exterior of the bag, you're gonna need three quarters of a yard. Now I am using vinyl and this vinyl is a little bit thicker. So because of that, I really don't have to add interfacing to this. So with the waterproof canvas and the vinyl and the wax canvas, none of these things need to be interfaced. I don't need this bag to be extremely hard and stiff. So I don't need to add any sort of stiffer interfacing. So in this version today, I'm actually not adding any interfacing. Now, if you wanted to make this bag in all quilt cotton, you can definitely do that. It's much easier if you do. Just whichever pieces of quilt cotton or cotton lycra, anything like that that you use, make sure you interface that with SF-101 or Woven Fuse. And if you're using really thin material, you're gonna also wanna use a more medium weight interfacing. And the pattern calls for Pellon 809 for that. Again, since I'm using waterproof canvas and vinyl, that is going to make my bag firm enough. Okay, we have a lot of extra stuff today. Really, I'm just kind of mixing it up and with all the different pockets, I found these things to be useful, but you don't need all of this. First of all, I have a plethora of marking tools. I love this little chalk pen, and then I have a vinyl marking tool, a heat erasing marking tool, and then an air erasing marking tool. As always, a seam ripper and stiletto is handy. I have this wonderful turning tool. I really prefer this metal turning tool because it's not too pokey, not too sharp on either end. So I don't have to worry about accidentally kind of busting through my seam or my fabric. Because I'm using vinyl and wax canvas and waterproof canvas, a lot of thicker material, I found that using this little key fob press on the thick parts of my seams, just pushing it down really hard before I stitch it has helped a lot. So I just wanted to show you, if you have one of these tools, this is great for bags. I've got my super sticky leather double-sided tape just for a couple items. Honestly, it's just for the front pocket placement, but you really don't even need this and I'll show you other things you can do. For the interior pocket, the needle pocket, instead of a fabric piece, I'm actually gonna use a mesh pocket today. I made it already with the fabric. I'm not using my bag for any sort of knitting or crocheting, so I don't really need the needle pockets, but I do like the idea of that pocket inside the zipper. So I'm going to make it a mesh pocket today, as always, a healthy supply of clips. To go with my mesh pocket, I have this double fold elastic. This just goes nice on the top of the pocket, allows the pocket to stretch. One of the most important tools I think you could have is this one inch by six inch ruler. It's just very, very handy if you have it in your sewing room. Today I'm actually gonna be using Universal 9014 needles. And that's just again because I'm using thicker material. An 8012 works fine, that's what I used on my previous bag. So if you're using normal to thinner material, you can use the 8012, but if you're really going to step it up with thicker vinyl and waterproof canvas, maybe go up to a 9014. I have my bag tag for my bag to prove I made it. 
And then I'll be using these rivet magnetic snaps. We've used this before in the channel. I have them, so I'm gonna use them. You could also just use the magnetic snaps with the little prongs, but I'm gonna show you how I use these today. For my scissors, I've got some thread snips and then fabric scissors, and as always, my Beacon 3-in-1 glue. Also, don't forget your zipper. Since I'm using zipper tape, I'm gonna be using a 15 inch long cut of zipper tape and then I have my little zipper pull already attached. So for all rectangular pattern pieces, she does give you the measurements in the pattern. So you do not need to cut out all of these templates. If you want to, you're more than welcome to do that. However, you can just use a ruler and your rotary cutter to do this. From the main panel piece, you're gonna have one cut of lining if your cut is quilt cotton, I do suggest you interface it with some sort of woven interfacing. And then two cuts from your exterior main fabric. Like I said, I'm using this beautiful vinyl today. This is gonna be a fun bag, guys, I can feel it. For your zipper, this goes along the front of the bag, you're gonna need four cuts of quilt cotton, and this is gonna be for the zipper ends. You could also use vinyl here. You know what, let's try that. I'm gonna cut out I'm gonna cut out a couple pieces of vinyl and let's use that for the exterior and we'll use the quilt cotton for the lining and we'll just see how that turns out. All right, there we go. Now I have my vinyl for zipper tabs as well. I've actually never used vinyl for a zipper tab, so we'll see. This vinyl is pretty thick too, so we'll just, we'll just try it out, we'll just try it out. So you're gonna need two pieces of exterior and two pieces of quilt cotton. To make it easier, you could just use your quilt cotton for all four of them and be fine. Like I said, for the needle pocket, I'm actually gonna switch it up just a little bit. So I change the cut of this. So instead of using the pattern piece, I just cut a piece of mesh that was about the size that I would want for my pocket. My mesh is the same width as the template, but it is five inches high. The binding piece is the same as in the pattern. And then I also added a piece of fold over elastic that is the same length as the binding piece. So these are the pieces I'll be using for just kind of a different pocket today. This pocket is needle pocket is entirely optional. If you don't want to do this at all, you can totally skip it. However, it is a really cool feature to have a pocket inside of a pocket. So I encourage you to get a little creative with it. Next up, we have the lining for the bag. It's just one big piece of fabric. This can be cut, again, using rotary cutter and a ruler. She gives you all the measurements. If you're using quilt cotton, make sure you interface it with woven interfacing. You're also gonna have one lining center panel and two lining side panels. So that bigger cut of lining I just showed you is one side of the bag. This is the other side of the bag. This is split up into threes because we're actually gonna be attaching another little pocket here. You can mix up this. You can make this center panel a different color so it really pops. I'm keeping it all the same today because that's just what I'm doing. You're gonna need two cuts of the side lining panels and one cut of the center lining panel. Next, we have the contrasting top. This is that really nice strip that goes around the top of the bag. Just a heads up, this top edge right here can get bulky in the very end when we're top stitching, which is why I chose not to use vinyl here. So instead I'm using wax canvas. Wax canvas is still thick, but it's a little bit easier to work with at the machine than if I had a big thick layer of vinyl right here. I have two cuts of my exterior wax canvas and then one cut of lining. Inside the bag, you're going to have a little slip pocket. You're gonna need two cuts of lining for that. I do encourage you to mix it up, use maybe a fun print here for that. You're gonna need two cuts of whatever fabric, your exterior or your lining for your straps. Since I'm using waterproof canvas for the lining, I always like to use that same waterproof canvas for the straps on the bag. I think it's kind of a fun pop of color, but you could definitely use your vinyl or your wax canvas, whatever you want for this. Again, if you're using any sort of quilt cotton, make sure you beef it up a little bit with some woven interfacing. And the last large rectangular piece is your zippered pocket lining. This is just the lining that's gonna go on that front zipper pocket of the bag. You know, when you open it up, this is what you'll see in the back. So again, you can use different pieces of fabric for all of these lining pieces and it would look amazing. And finally, we have the pieces for that adorable front pocket. This is optional. If you're not comfortable top stitching this in place, go ahead and skip this. Again, you can make this pattern as difficult or as easy as you want. For the front pocket, you're going to need two of the bigger pieces here for the tote pocket and then two cuts for the pocket flap. I'm using wax canvas for all of this. All right, once you have everything fused and ready to go, let's go ahead and get these straps prepped. So take your straps and fold them wrong sides up. Grab a ruler and your marking tool of choice and we're just going to draw a midpoint line going down the center of the long edge of our straps. 
on the back, on the wrong side. Once you have those center lines marked, take the long edges of your strap and fold them wrong sides together up to meet that center line. And then you can just finger press and add some clips to hold it in place. If you're using quilt cotton here, you can just press this with an iron. You don't need to use the clips. Once you have those raw edges folded in, just fold the entire unit together so that the raw edges are tucked into the center. And if you're using clips like I am, just go ahead and attach them to one another. And you don't need to worry about finishing off these edges or anything because these will be eaten up in the seam allowance. Go ahead and repeat this for your other strap. So once you have these clipped, take them to the sewing machine and top stitch along both long folded edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have those straps done, go ahead and set these to the side. So now let's prep our zipper. So grab all of your zipper tabs and your zipper for the front of your bag. Okay, and you can do this one at a time or all together. I'm just gonna do it all together. So take your zipper right side up, grab your exterior zipper tab and lay it on one side, right side down. And if your zipper tab is a little bit wider than the end of your zipper tape, that's totally fine. Just make sure it covers the zipper tape entirely. And then I'm just gonna add some clips here. Do the same on the other side. So if you have a directional print, think about that now. Actually, I'm gonna flip this around because I want my zipper to close on the left side like that. So I'm going to put my zipper tabs on so that they're facing up with the zipper closing on the left side. So we're just going to lay the zipper tape and the zipper tabs right sides together. We're working on the exterior ones right now. Okay, now you can baste these on before doing the next step, or if you want, just flip this over so you have the wrong side of the zipper tape facing up. And now grab your lining zipper tabs, and with the right side of the lining tab down against the back of your zipper tape, just match it up with the exterior zipper tabs and include them in the clips. There you go. Do this on the other side as well. Now we can take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along these two short edges at a half of an inch seam allowance. Okay, once you have those sewn on, now we're just going to pull these zipper tabs and press them away from the zipper tape. If you're using any sort of quilt cotton here, you can just press these with an iron. But I'm just going to kind of gently press with my fingers and then pull away and line up these short raw edges and clip those together just to help keep everything straight. I'm gonna do this with the other side as well. All right, there we go. So now once you have these pulled away, you can take this back to the sewing machine and just top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance on the exterior zipper tabs, just to hold this fold in place. To make it easier later, you can also base stitch or just top stitch these short raw edges as well at about an eighth to a quarter inch seam allowance. There we go, and that looks great. You know, it's funny, I've never used a vinyl for a zipper tab and now I think I might be hooked. So if your zipper tabs extend wider than your zipper tape, you can grab your scissors and just kind of shave down the sides so that it's the same width as your zipper tape. There we go, now we have our adorable little zipper already. Now grab one of your contrast top exteriors and find the midpoint along the bottom edge. So I'm just gonna fold it in half and then cut the tiniest mark for that triangle. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing with our zipper tape. Let's just mark the midpoint on our entire zipper tape. So now take your contrasting panel and lay it right side up with the top to the top and the bottom of the bottom if you have a directional print. Take your zipper and when your zipper is closed, the zipper pull should go towards the left and lay that right side up right beneath your contrasting panel and then all you have to do is take your zipper tape and flip it so that it's wrong side up. Match up the midpoint mark on your zipper tape with the midpoint mark on the bottom of your contrasting panel and clip in place. And then just clip along this entire edge. You might notice that your zipper tape with the zipper tabs is a little bit longer than that contrasting top. That's totally fine. That's why we lined it up with the midpoints. 
So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna baste along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, forgot to record that, sorry. But we just basted it along this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I used about a five millimeter stitch length. So once you have your zipper basted in place, grab your contrasting top lining panel and lay it right side down against the back side of your zipper and line it up so that it matches with the edges of the exterior contrasting piece, not the edges of your zipper tape if they extend farther. So don't line it up all the way over here. Line it up closer over here so that it matches with the exterior piece. So I like to pin the edges together first and then I'll pin the center. Now let's take this to the sewing machine and just sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. So if you want, now is a great time to trim down the zipper ends. So your little zipper tabs here. Now push your lining panel up and away from the zipper. It helps if you close your zipper during this part all the way up and then do the same thing with your exterior panel push them both away from the zipper now if you're using quilt cotton here you can press this with an iron and that's going to work great if you're using some heavier fabric like i am what i like to do is clip these raw edges so that they're lined up and wrong sides together just a few clips you don't have to do a lot here i just want to hold this in place and then i pull on my zipper tape to get it as flat as possible over here. If you're using wax canvas, this is actually much easier than with other materials because wax canvas is like candle wax. It just kind of folds like you want it. So it's not too hard to get it flat. And then just tug on it to try to get your zipper tape as straight as possible. There we go. Now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and just top stitch along this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So remember, this is actually the top of your bag. So if you're looking at it and you're like, it's upside down, this is the top of your bag. So when closed, the zipper should go to the left. Adorable. Now take one of your exterior main panels and lay it right side up. You can go ahead and find the midpoint of this as well if you'd like, but you don't need to. And then take your contrasting top with the zipper, laying it right side up. You have an idea now of your bag, right? This is your bag. So then take your zipper and lay it right side down. So right sides together, line up the sides, making sure the contrasting top comes down. So I'll even just clip the contrasting part on the side to the main part, just to try to get everything lined up as much as possible. Clip along the top edge. Now we can take this to the sewing machine and just baste along this clipped edge. Once you have the zipper basted onto the main exterior, grab your main lining piece and lay it right side down and line it up with the top edge here with the zipper and the exterior and just clip it in place. And now we can sew along this top clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, just like before, we're gonna take our lining and our exterior and pull them wrong sides together. And it might be easiest for you to clip the bottom edge just a little bit to help keep it all lined up while we're tugging along the zipper. And then if you're using quilt cotton here, go ahead and use an iron, otherwise you can finger press this. You can iron this waterproof canvas if you'd like. All right, once you have this as straight as you can get it, we're gonna take it back to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch along the exterior bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Look how cute that is, isn't that fun? Oh, I love this fabric, this is so fun. So now in the pattern, she suggests trimming down the bottom edge of this. You're gonna measure from the top all the way down and then trim. If it's easier for you, you can take your zipper pocket lining panel and just line that up with your exterior on the top edge and then you'll see how much you need to trim off the bottom. So either way, a ruler or tracing it out using this, you just wanna trim down this bottom so it's the same size as what the pattern suggests. Okay, once you have that trimmed down to size, go ahead and set this to the side. 
So now let's work on that front pocket. So starting with the flap, let's take our two flap pieces and lay them right sides together and then just clip along all the sides to keep it in place. So now let's take this to the sewing machine and we're going to sew along the curved and bottom edge, so not along this top straight edge, at a half of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch really well at the top. Okay, so once you have that stitched, what I like to do is go around and trim this to a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then around these curves here, I'm just going to clip in about halfway. So about an eighth of an inch in. And I'm just using little clips with my scissors here. That will just help the fabric kind of fold over and expand as it needs to to give us a nice smooth curve. Now take your flap and then turn it right side out. If you have a turning tool, you can use that to just kind of help smooth out those edges, get everything as straight as possible. Okay, so now I'm gonna go around the edge of this and you can iron this if you're using any sort of quilt cotton or anything like that. I'm just gonna use clips here and clip around the edges to get it all straightened out and flat. Okay, we can take this back to the sewing machine and just top stitch along the sides and the bottom curved edges. If you wanna do two or three rows of top stitching, that's great. I'm just gonna do one row of top stitching. There we go, your flap is now done. Go ahead and put that to the side. Now let's work on the bottom pocket part. So we're gonna do this in a similar way. Lay the pockets right sides together and then you can clip around all the edges. So for this one, you're gonna to wanna to leave about a four inch opening along this top straight edge. So just grab a small ruler, or you can just kind of eyeball it and leave four inches open. There we go, just marked that. And now we're gonna start at one of the markings, go all the way to the side, go down around the curve in the bottom, up to the other side, and then back to the other marking. Sewing this all at a half of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch really well at the beginning and the ends. So now I'm going to trim down the seam allowance again to a quarter inch seam allowance along the sides and the bottom. And then I'll also trim it down along the top edge only where I sewed. So I'm not going to trim it down between my marks. And then for these corners up here, I'm gonna trim down that corner and then I'm just going to cut in a couple slits that are parallel to that trim down corner. So once again, I'll trim down the corner and then a little slit in on the top and the side. There we go. And then around these curved edges, once again, just trim in a little bit so that the fabric can spread out as it needs to. Now we can just turn this little pocket right side out. If you need to, grab your turning tool to help get those top corners poked out. Okay, and just like before, I'm just going to press along the seam and use clips to flatten this out and get this all kind of as straight as possible. You can use an iron here if your material allows it. And then for this top opening here, just fold it down so that this entire top edge is nice and straight. And then you can just use some clips to hold it all together. And now this time we're going to top stitch along this top straight edge. So don't worry about the curves just yet. I like to keep the clips on there to help keep it all straight, but I'm only focused on this top straight edge now. I'm gonna to top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, there we go. Now we just have to attach this to our bag. So grab your outer panel that you attach the zipper to, and you wanna attach this bottom pocket portion centered and two and a quarter inches down from this zipper. So what we're gonna do is we're going to fold our panel in half, and I'm lining up the zipper tabs over here and I'm just gonna find a little mark here. Now I'm gonna use air erasing marker on my zipper tape to mark the midpoint. You could also use chalk here, you could use a piece of tape. Remember, this will all be seen, so I trust that the air erasing marker will go away. But if you're worried about that, just use something else like some chalk or tape. And then we wanna find the midpoint of our pocket piece. So again, we can just fold this. I will use chalk here for this part. Now I'm gonna grab my ruler, line up one of my grid marks with that midpoint mark, and line up another grid mark along this top edge of my exterior panel, just to try to keep everything straight. I'll take my pocket here and match it up with the midpoint mark and the midpoint mark on my ruler that I'm using, just like that. 
And now if you're using quilt cotton here, you can use some pins to hold this in place. Otherwise, you might want to use some tape. You could also use washi tape to hold this down. You have a lot of different options here. You just want to hold this in place. Here we go. So now I have my pocket in place, centered and straight. Now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch along the sides and the bottom. And we're going to do a little triangle up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the edge, go up towards the top stitching along my top edge here at a diagonal, follow the top stitching along the top edge, and then go around the entire pocket all the way to the other side. And then I'm going to make another little triangle over here. That little triangle is going to help add extra enforcement so that you don't have to worry about this pocket coming undone at any point. Do make sure you backstitch well. And if you want to do a second row of stitching, go ahead and do that. As you saw, I do actually stitch through the pocket, through the exterior, and through the lining. So here you can see on the back, here's the lining. I stitch through all of them. Now, I don't know if you need to. You definitely could just stitch through this exterior here if you wanted to. I don't think it's that big of a deal, and I feel like going through both layers adds a little bit more support. Doing that's not going to affect piecing this together in the end, so it's totally up to you. So once you have the pocket part stitched in place, grab your roller and we're going to measure one inch from the top edge of that straight edge there and then take your flap and lay your flap bottom side up and just line it up over your ruler and center it. So your flap might be a little bit wider than your pocket. That's, that's normal. I think this time I'll try using some washi tape. So I'll just tape it on the sides. Tape doesn't really stick to wax canvas at all, so I just need it to stay together for a little bit. So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew along this bottom raw edge of our flap at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that stitched in place, now we're gonna fold this flap down so it goes over your pocket. Just like that. And you might not be folding it down right at the seam. That's okay. You can see I fold it down about a quarter of an inch above the seam. And if you, you know it's not totally straight when you sewed it on, this is your chance to fix that. So if you need to kind of readjust, you can do that here. Okay, so now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and sew along this folded edge on the top at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then we're gonna do another one a quarter inch below those stitches. We really wanna hold this in place and make sure you backstitch at the beginning of the end of each one of those rows. There we go, now we have our flap attached. Now, to be honest, you could just leave this like this if you wanted to, you don't have to add any sort of, you know, snaps here or anything like that. You could add the plastic cam snaps, which is what we're gonna do on the pouch. What I'm actually gonna use though are these magnetic snaps. So these are magnetic snaps like normal, but they have a rivet backing. So they have nice little rivets right here on the other side of the magnets. I think this is a perfect project for those. So I'm gonna use these with my cam snap rivet press. So on the flap, I'm gonna measure in one inch from the side of my pocket, not the side of my flap, but the side of my pocket. One inch from the side of my pocket, and then three quarters of an inch from the bottom edge of the flap. So you can see I'm just laying my ruler like this. It can't really stay straight, that's okay. And then right here on the tip of my ruler, I'll mark my dot. And that's where I'm gonna put my snaps can lift it up, make sure it's going to be covering the pocket part as well. And do the same thing on the other side, one inch away from the side of the pocket, and then three quarters of an inch from the bottom edge of the flap. You can see my flap isn't totally centered on my pocket, that's okay. The biggest thing here is we wanna make sure it's going to go through and get to the bottom panel, there we go. So now I'm gonna use the hole punch on my rivet press. And I'm just going to punch a hole right where I mark those dots. And there we go. Now, once I have those holes punched, 
I can again use my marking tool and just insert it into the hole and that will allow me to mark the holes on the bottom pocket. So I can lift this up. So they're pretty close to the top edge, but that's okay. So I'm just going to lift this up and use my rivet press to punch holes where I marked. Make sure it's only going through the pocket, not through the exterior panel. So I'm going to install the female end of my magnets on the flap part. Now again, you don't want to do this if you have the magnets with the prongs. It's not, this isn't a good piece for that. This is good though for those rivets. So I'm going to insert the female part of my magnet on the bottom of the flap. And then I can just grab one of these rivet tops and snap it over towards the front like that. And do the same thing on the other one. The female portion of the magnet goes on the bottom of the flap and then add a rivet cap. There we go. Now before I snap this in, I'm going to attach the male end as well. So this time the male is going to go on the top part of the pocket and then the cap will go on the inside of the pocket just like that. Now depending on where you place these, these can be a little bit difficult to rivet in. I know because of these triangles here, I made these pretty big when I stitched them on. It's going to be a little challenging for me, but I think we'll be okay. So add another male one, put it on. And now I like to just test it out because sometimes I accidentally put the male and the female ones in the wrong place. So it's better to know if you need to change something now rather than after you have it already riveted in place. All right, so there it is. Test it out. Yep, that'll work. Okay, the die set that comes with this is just three pieces. You only change out the bottom piece and you keep the top piece in place. The top piece is for the caps. So I'm gonna screw that piece in place first. And then I'll put the die that looks like the male end. So this is gonna be used with the female ends. So I'm just gonna put that in place. And I'll just take that flap and lay it down so that the cap is up top. Push in place. Now I can just remove that bottom piece and insert my other bottom piece. This one looks like the female end, but it will be used with the male end. And with the cap side up, I'm just gonna insert this and just push it down. All right, there we go. Now we have our magnetic snap in place. Like I said, you can use plastic cam snaps here. You could use the metal fashion snaps. You don't have to use a snap at all. You could just leave this as a nice little pocket. There's a lot of options here, but if you wanted to see how to use the magnetic snaps, that's how you do it. You can go ahead and take your exterior panel and put it to the side. All right, now we're gonna work on the needle pocket, which is completely optional. And like I said, I'm not making a needle pocket. I'm actually gonna make a mesh pocket. So I have my mesh piece and I have my fold over elastic. What I wanna do now though, is make the binding for the, this will be the bottom edge of my pocket. If you're making the fold over pocket like she has in the pattern, this binding will be for the top edge of the pocket. But since I'm using this mesh, this will be for the bottom edge. So all we have to do is take our binding and lay it right side down and then fold it in half, hot dog style, wrong sides together. And since I'm using quilt cotton here, I can just press this with my iron. Once you have it pressed in half lengthwise, you can open it back up and then fold the raw long edges up to meet that center pressed line and press again. And then you can just fold this in half once again and use some clips to hold it or press it again. Okay, since we're doing our pocket a little bit different, I'm going to kind of diverge from the pattern now. I have my fold over elastic here and I'm going to lay it whichever way is right side up. I never know which side is the right side, but lay it however you're comfortable. And then we're going to line up our mesh over it. And we're just gonna fold the elastic around the top edge of the mesh. Now fold over elastic has kind of like a, like a crease or a seam that goes down the center, which makes it very easy to fold in half. So I'm just gonna fold it all the way over and down. And to sew this, I will probably have to change my needle. I think the 9014 needle is going to be a little bit too heavy duty. So I'm just gonna stick on the 8012 real quick. So once I have this clipped on to the top edge, now I'm just gonna take that binding I made and I'm going to open it up. And she has a nice way for attaching the binding on here, but since this is on the bottom and it's not that noticeable, 
I'm okay if it's not perfect. So I'm just going to lay my binding so that the raw edges are in the center and it's up. And then I'm gonna take my mesh and just tuck it in so that the bottom edge of the mesh lines up with those raw edges. And then I'll just fold it around that bottom edge. It's just, it's just gonna hug it. It should fold over pretty easily. And you could use this fabric binding for the top and the bottom. You don't have to use that fold over elastic. I know it's a little tricky to work with. If it's giving you a headache, just use some fabric binding. This is simple to make, simple to apply. Okay, now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I pretty much just sew right down the middle, maybe more, a little bit closer to the edge, but I wanna make sure I catch both edges on the top and bottom. So I'm gonna sew mostly down the middle of each one of these folded over strips. There we go, there's our mesh pocket. So you see with this elastic, it allows me to kind of stretch because the mesh is stretchy, the elastic is stretchy, versus on the bottom, there's no stretch. So I like to have the elastic on the top, so you know when I'm putting stuff in, I can kind of stretch the pocket out, but it's not necessary. So now grab your zippered pocket lining panel, and the pattern suggests laying your pocket six and a half inches from the top edge. That does make it pretty high, so if you have taller items, it's gonna be difficult. I'm just gonna take mine to seven inches from the top edge, since my pocket's a little bit taller as well. So I have my ruler lined up with the seven inch on the top, and then all I have to do is line up the top edge of my pocket here with my ruler. And if you want, you can use pins here to pin this in place. I can just grab some clips and clip the sides. And now I'm gonna take this back to the sewing machine, and I'm going to run over the top stitching on this bottom edge here where I have my binding, and then I'm gonna base down the sides as well. Okay, so once you have that bottom edge stitched in place and you have the sides basted, now you can decide how you want your pockets. So if you're using the piece of fabric like they have in the pattern, you can do needle pockets for your crochet needles or your knitting needles. Honestly, for me, I'm just gonna do one center pocket so that way I can use this for whatever I want. So I just use this chalk pen to mark a center line and I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and starting at the bottom, I'm going to backstitch first and then go up that chalk line and then at the top backstitch again. Just make sure it's very secure. You can do this for as many pockets as you want. All right, there we go. And so you can see with this one, I'll have a half of an inch lost on the side so they'll be a little bit smaller, but this is a great size for just like a standard tote bag. So now take your lining panel that you just attached this pocket to and lay it right side up. Then grab your exterior panel that has the zipper and lay that right side up over top of it. Remember how I said I wanted these to be the same size when we were trimming down this exterior panel? This is why. So this is so cool, look. This is the exterior of your bag and when you open up this zipper, you have your little pocket in there. Isn't that cool? It's a pocket in a pocket. I thought that was fantastic. So now we're going to line up all four edges, grab some clips and just clip it together. Both of these are right side up because again, when you open the pocket from the right side of your bag, you wanna see the right side of your lining. So now let's take this to the sewing machine and just baste along all four sides at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So here is my tag and I like it to be centered and on this contrasting panel. So all you have to do is find the midpoint here. I still have a faint mark from my air racing mark of the midpoint, so I'm gonna use that. And I'm just gonna measure up three inches from this top edge of my bottom exterior panel. So right here below the zipper, I'm using that midpoint mark I already have on there and I'm measuring up three inches from there. And then I can just mark a point there. Since I'm using a metal bag tag, I'm gonna grab a washer and just center it over that mark. Try to keep it as straight as possible and mark the slits for my prongs. 
And then I'll take a seam ripper and just gently seam rip around those slits. And I'm going through the exterior top contrasting panel and then two layers of lining. I have the lining on the back of this contrasting and then I have the large lining as well. And I can just take my tag, insert it into those slits and then grab your washer and then just pull open the prongs just like that. And if you want, you can attach a layer of interfacing over this to protect the lining. Since I'm using waterproof canvas for the lining as well, I'm not that worried about it. But you can see, doesn't that, just a nice little finish to your bag. So now grab a ruler and we're gonna measure three inches up from this bottom edge and we're gonna mark a line with any sort of erasable marker. So I have my air erasing marker here. I'm just gonna mark a line on my vinyl. You know what, I actually have a pen for this very specific purpose. So I'm gonna grab my leather and vinyl pen and mark with that. So now I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna top stitch along that marked line. That's that three inch marked line. This is going to allow the bag to fold better because we will be boxing these corners and this will be the bottom fold of the bag. This just allows it to fold a little bit easier and not lose its shape so easily. Okay, you can go ahead and put this to the side. Grab your remaining exterior panel and your remaining top contrasting panel and lay them both right side up, lined in the right direction. And then take your top contrasting panel and just fold that down, right sides together along the top edge of the bottom panel and clip together. Now let's take this to the sewing machine and sew along this clipped edge at a half of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have those stitched together, just push up your contrasting panel so the seam is behind it. And then we can take this back to the sewing machine and just top stitch along this contrasting edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can do a second row of top stitching if you'd like. All right, so take your exterior back and lay it right side up. Grab your exterior front and lay it right side down. Isn't this so cute? This bag is looking so good. I like to put my zipper pull in the middle so I don't have to worry about it, worry about accidentally sewing over it. And now let's just line up all four edges and I'm gonna pin along the sides and the bottom. When you're lining this all up, focus more on lining up the contrasting edges. So if your bottom isn't quite reaching your top, just focus on these contrasting edges. Line those up first on both sides and then pin the rest of the edges. If you have some spots that are a little bit shorter, for example, this right here is a little bit shorter, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Again, we have a half of an inch seam allowance. That's gonna take care of any problems. Okay, so the pattern has you cutting squares down here now before you sew it for your boxed bottoms. I'm gonna mark them, but I'm not gonna cut them until after I get done sewing. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and sew along the edges and the bottom at a half of an inch seam allowance. Before I get to these marked lines, I'm gonna back stitch. So remember, anything inside of this bottom corner is gonna be cut out. So I'm gonna back stitch before I get to the marked line and then just continue stitching, back stitch after I leave that little box, continue on again. You see what I'm saying? You wanna back stitch on the outsides of your box because we're gonna be tugging on those when we box these corners. But a half of an inch seam allowance all the way around. I went over all of the stitching one more time. Um, because I'm using vinyl, I usually always go over the stitches two times. Vinyl is so thick, it will pull on it and then you can see the stitches on the finished bag and you don't wanna do that. So now I'm just gonna cut along those marked lines I made. And this is going to help me box my corners. Okay, so now let's box these corners. I'm gonna pull along the cut corners just like this. The seam allowance on the sides, we wanna open up, okay? And you'll notice that one side is thicker than the other. So you can see this side over here on my right, I have a lot of layers here. So this seam allowance right here is pretty thick. 
and then the one on the left, it's just two layers of vinyl for me, so it's a little bit thinner. So I'm gonna open it up, and then on this bottom edge here, I'm gonna rotate the seam allowance so it's going in the opposite direction as the thicker side over here on the right. So just like this. And if you're having trouble getting that straight, pull from the bottom of your bag instead of just this top. So open up the bottom of the bag or the center of the bag and then work on straightening this out here. Okay, and then I like to add a couple clips further down on the side here to really help hold it in place because I don't wanna worry about this kind of shifting on me at the machine. Go ahead and do the same thing with the other side. There we go. Now let's take these to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along these two short edges right here at a half of an inch seam allowance. If you're using thicker material, I suggest you go over it twice. Before we turn this out, you are more than welcome to trim down the seam allowance a little bit if you want. It is pretty big. I'm just gonna trim it in half where I can. So down towards these balked edges, you know, if I can't get super close to that, that's fine. You see, I just go as far as I can and then I'll veer off. And the bottom is fine. I don't need to trim that down. So now let's turn the bag right side out. All right, let's go ahead and put this to the side and finish up our lining. So grab your two interior slip pockets and lay them right sides together. And we're worried about these shorter edges. So the longer edges are on the side, the shorter edges are on the top and bottom. So go ahead and lay them right sides together and let's clip along the top and the bottom edges. Now let's take this to the sewing machine and just stitch along the top and bottom edges at a half of an inch seam allowance. Once you have these sewn together, go ahead and turn this right side out. And now you can press along this with your iron if you'd like. If you're using cool cotton, that will be very easy. If you're using waterproof canvas, you can just press it with your fingers and then clip it. All right, so now if you have any sort of directional print for this, make sure that the top is facing up. And we're gonna top stitch along the top edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then we'll go ahead and do another row of top stitching an inch down below that. She adds grommets to this. Uh, I'm not gonna be adding grommets today, but the point of that would be if you wanted to put yarn in here and then you could pull the yarn through those grommets. That would be a beautiful, beautiful attachment. Since I'm not gonna be using this bag for knitting or crocheting, I'm just gonna do the top stitching and then add it as a slip pocket. All right, now grab your center lining panel and we're going to line up this pocket on top of it. So center lining panel right side up, your pocket right side up, and just line it up three and a half inches from the top edge. Once you have it lined up, just grab some clips and clip it to the side. And you can see I still have my clips along this bottom edge here to try to keep it as straight as possible. So now let's take this back to the sewing machine and just baste along the side edges and top stitch along this bottom edge. Okay, once you have that stitched in place, grab your two side lining pieces and you can see where we're going with this. Make sure that the open side of your pocket is up. Take your lining piece and lay it right sides together along one edge. So for me, it's the right edge. Go ahead and clip these lining pieces right sides together along this edge. Since I'm here, I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side as well. So the left edge, right sides together. Okay, now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and just sew along these two long edges at a half of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have those sewn on, you're just gonna press your lining sides back and the seam should be behind these side panels. Just press it all the way back, do this on the other side as well. If you're using cool cotton here, go ahead and grab an iron and press along this seam to get it nice and straight. If you're not using that, go ahead and finger press it. Okay, so now let's take this back to the sewing machine and just top stitch along these sides at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So we're just holding the seam to the sides of our lining. Once 
once you have this all prepped, just lay this right side up. Make sure again your pocket opening is towards the top. Grab your remaining lining panel and lay that right sides down so they're right sides together. And then we're just gonna clip along the sides and the bottom. Okay, just like before, we're gonna mark our squares on the bottom corners. So over on one of the sides, you're gonna wanna leave at least a six inch opening. If you're using heavy vinyl like I am, you might even wanna make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to mark probably about a seven inch opening over here because that vinyl is gonna to be tough to get through. There we go. So now we're gonna go along the side and the bottom at a half of an inch seam allowance, just like we did before, backstitch on the outside of your boxes so that you can turn this easier and you can pull on it. Between these marks right here, we're not gonna sew, we're just going to backstitch when we get to it, skip over the opening, backstitch, go all the way to the top. So you're gonna do all this at a half of an inch. Once you have those sewn, go ahead and cut out those boxed bottoms. And just like before, we'll just box these bottoms by pulling along the cut corners and letting these seams. I'm just gonna push one seam to the left, one seam to the right. It's not that big of a deal. We can still press open the side seams at the top later if we need to. So like I said, I like to pin kind of further down to keep this boxed edge straight or else I notice it's starting to make kind of like a V shape. Do this on the other side as well. So now we can sew along these short boxed edges at a half of an inch seam allowance. All right, there you go. The lining is mostly built. Now we're just gonna add some magnetic snaps to this. So you could use the same snaps that I used for the pocket, but I'm just gonna show you with these magnetic snap prongs, which I think most of you will probably be using. All right, to do this, we're gonna find the midpoint on both the top edges of our lining panels. So you can just pull this together so that the side seams are matched up with one another. And then just tug along the top. And then I'm gonna pinch that midpoint with my finger and then just use my scissors to cut a teeny tiny triangle there. Do the same thing on the other side. And now I'm working on the back side, which is fine. I'm gonna measure one and a half inches down from that marked midpoint, and then just mark a midpoint dot like that. Now I can take one of the washers from my magnetic snap and then center it over that marked dot, and then draw the lines for the slits. There we go. Go ahead and do the same thing on the other lining panel. So I'm grabbing a little scrap here of Decoville Light just because that's what I have laying around. You can use whatever, fusible fleece, even foam, uh, Decoville Heavy, whatever you want. Just some sort of interfacing, some scrap of it, and mark the slits on this as well. And we'll use this to help beef up the material a little bit so that it will hold these snaps better since these are a little bulky. So grab your seam ripper and seam rip through all the slits you marked on the lining and on the interfacing if you're using it. Even if you had like a scrap of vinyl, you could use that too. So it doesn't have to be interfacing, it could just be a scrap of thicker fabric. It's just even with this waterproof canvas, it's a little thin and I wanna beef it up just a bit. So now grab either your female or your male end, it doesn't matter. Insert the snap so it's on the right side of your lining and the prongs come to the back side. Take whatever, your vinyl, your interfacing, whatever you're using, put that over the prongs and then take your washer apply that and then separate those prongs like that. Do the same thing on the other side. Make sure the magnet part is on the right side of the lining on the inside. There we go. So now you should be good to go. And if you wanted to, you could apply a piece of interfacing over the back of this so that these prongs don't rub against the exterior. Since I'm using heavy material, I'm really not worried about it. You can put the lining to the side for just a moment. Now let's grab our exterior. And if you haven't already found the midpoints along the top edges, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to put together the sides, just like I did on the lining, and then pull and pinch, and use my scissors to mark a tiny triangle. Do the same thing on the other side. 
Okay, so now let's attach our straps. You're gonna measure two and one quarter inch from your midpoint mark, and your strap should be going down towards the bottom of your bag, and the inner side of your strap is gonna go right up against that ruler just like that. You could mark this with a pen if you wanted to as well, but I'm just gonna use my ruler, and I'm just gonna clip this like that. Now, make sure your strap is straight, so straighten it out and we're gonna apply it on the other side the same way. So two and a quarter inches from the midpoint mark. And then the inner side of my strap goes up against the end of my ruler. Now you can take this to the sewing machine and just baste along these edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. So once you have one strap attached, go ahead and flip this over and you're going to attach the other strap in the exact same way to the back of your bag. All right, now we just have to put the bag together. So keep your exterior right side out and your lining should be right side on the inside, so wrong side out. So take your exterior and insert it into your lining and the side of your lining that has the pocket should go up against the side of your exterior that doesn't have anything. So the back of your bag should go right sides together along the side of the lining with the pocket. It doesn't really matter, it's just a suggestion. So go ahead and insert this in, make sure those straps stay tucked in between the exterior and the lining on whatever side they're attached. So they should be on opposite edges, just tuck it in. And you're gonna have to really smush it in there. Now, you can do these top seams however you'd like. If you wanna press both of the seams from the lining and the exterior open, that's fine. If you wanna fold them in opposite directions, that's also fine. I'm gonna go in opposite directions, and I start with the side seams, and I attach a clip for the exterior and lining, just like that. I'll do the other side as well. And then, if you have midpoints marked on your lining and exterior, now's a great time to line those up. And then just go around the entire top edge. You should be seeing wrong sides of everything. On the outside, it's the wrong side of the lining. On the inside, it's the wrong side of the exterior panel. All right, now let's take this to the sewing machine and sew along this top clipped edge at a half of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna go around two times just to really make sure it's all nice and secure. This bag is heavy, especially if you use heavier fabric, so just be aware your bag, if it's on the edge of the table, it might start sliding off. Just hold on to it so it doesn't pull on your needle. bit tricky to keep the lines straight because the bag is so heavy. Um, that's why going around a second time helps. Now if you'd like you can go ahead and trim down the seam allowance to a quarter of an inch but don't trim where the straps are. Leave the strap seam allowance at a half of an inch. Now let's turn this whole thing out through the opening that we left in our lining. Okay, so now what I like to do is I like to tuck my exterior into my lining because when I top stitch, I'm gonna top stitch from the inside of the bag. And so I wanna be able to see the exterior while I'm top stitching. So I'm gonna take my exterior and just insert it into the lining so the whole bag is just kind of flipped inside out. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now I leave that lining side open while I top stitch because I like to get my hand in between the layers and smooth out that top seam and get it as straight as possible, especially since I'm using this thicker fabric. So I'm just gonna use my fingers to smooth it out and then add a clip to hold it together. Okay, so as you can see, these side seams here can get a little bulky. What I've been doing is grabbing this key fob clamp type thing and first I reach in and make sure my seams are opposite directions or open, just as flat as possible. And then I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna go right over the seam and I'm just gonna press it pretty hard just to smush it down a bit. 
You have to be a little bit careful not to destroy your fabric because it is pretty heavy duty, but it does get it thinner. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. All right, so once you have this all ready to go, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and just top stitch along this top edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Like I said, I sew from inside the bag, so I like to have the exterior on the inside so I can see it. If you wanna add a second row of top stitching, you're more than welcome to do that. you can just pull out that exterior again and I find it's just easiest to close this up with the lining out like this so if you need to just push your fingers in and fold down your lining to close up that hole okay now we can go top stitch along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance Once you're done, just tuck in that lining. And there you go, your caravan tote is done. Now let's make the pouch. So for the pouch, we're gonna be using pretty much the same material again, waterproof canvas, wax canvas for the pocket, vinyl for the exterior, just like the caravan tote. I won't be using any sort of interfacing here just because I don't need to. This time though, for the pocket snap, we're gonna use some plastic cam snaps, again with my rivet press, but you could also use it with a handheld press. So for the pouch, I'm gonna be using an 11 inch long zipper and I have one zipper tab. Don't forget to have your zipper pull on there if you're using zipper tape. I have two pieces of wax canvas for my flap for the front pouch. And then I have two pieces of wax canvas for that front pouch, just like I did on the tote. For the lining, I have two pieces of waterproof canvas. And then using that same pattern piece, I have my exterior, which are two pieces of vinyl. Before we get started, you're gonna to wanna to go to the exterior of your vinyl or your main panel and your lining, all four pieces, and mark your darts. It's best to mark them now so you don't have to finagle with this later when you get to that step. So the first thing we wanna do is build that front pocket just like we did on the tote. So take your two flat pieces and lay them right sides together and then clip along the edges to hold it in place. For the bottom part of the pocket, go ahead and do the same thing. Just clip all the edges together, right sides together. So for the flap, we're going to stitch along the sides and the bottom at a half of an inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the top. We're not sewing the top edge. For this bottom part, we're going to leave about a four inch opening along the top, and then we're gonna go along the top just a little bit, half of an inch seam allowance, go all the way down around to the other edge and then to the other marked opening. Now I'm gonna trim the seam allowance in half, so it's a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm working on the flap right now. And then I'll go around the curved edges of the flap and just cut in halfway through the remaining seam allowance. Little slits. I'm not making V's or anything, I'm just doing little slits. You could also use pinking shears here, that would be easy. For the bottom part, I'm just going to trim down the seam allowance along the top edge where there's stitches. So this opening here, I'm not gonna trim down. And then I'll go around the sides and the bottom, trimming that seam allowance. And then for these top corners, I'll just trim those down and then trim into the seam allowance, parallel little slits to that diagonal. And then I'll cut little slits around the round part on the bottom here, just those round corners. Okay, now we can turn both of these right side out, starting with the flap. And then if you're using quilt cotton here, you can just press that with an iron, or you can grab some clips, push out that seam to get it as round and neat looking as possible. All right, you can set the flap to the side. Now turn out your pocket right side out, and then I'll be using clips to hold this in place. And then you can just fold down the pieces of fabric from the opening 
do your best to get this all as straight as possible. So you might find it easier to get your seams clipped or pressed first and then press down that top edge. So the goal is to get it as straight as you can, but it's not that big of a deal. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch around this entire edge of my flap at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then for the bottom part, I'm only gonna top stitch along this top edge. And you can do two rows if you'd like to make it really nice and secure. Okay, once you have that stitched, grab one of your exterior panels. And so if you have one of these panels that you want to be the front, grab that one, because we're gonna put the pocket on it. Go ahead and find the midpoint along the top edge, and then find the midpoint along this top straight edge of your pocket. And you don't wanna cut that, so I'm just gonna mark it with some chalk. You're gonna line this up so it's two and a quarter inches down from the top straight edge and centered. This time I'm just gonna try a couple pieces of just regular clear tape to hold this in place. Okay, now let's take this to the sewing machine and stitch along the sides at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once again, I'm gonna sew little triangles in the top corners here just to really help hold this in place so you don't have to worry about it coming up at any point. Once you have that pocket attached, then all you have to do is measure a half of an inch above that pocket, and that's where we're gonna place our flap. So if you have one side of your flap you prefer, make that go up, line this up a half of an inch above and centered, and this time I can just clip this to the top edge of the exterior panel. Now let's go ahead and sew along the bottom edge of our flap at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now take your flap and fold it down, and you don't have to fold it right at the seam. You can let it, you know, kind of fold a quarter of an inch or so above the seam. And you just wanna get it as straight as possible and centered on that bottom panel. Depending on your material, you might notice that this right here, these corners up here get a little bulky, so just be careful sewing over those. And if you really wanna avoid sewing over those bulks, you can press this down with your finger and see how there's an indention right here. You can sew that far away so that you, you top stitch those bulks into the seam without actually having to sew on top of it. So now let's take this to the sewing machine and you can do an eighth of an inch and then another quarter of an inch seam allowance or you can just top stitch so that you don't have to sew over the really thick edges. Okay, so now that we have this on, I'm going to attach my bag tag. So I'm just going to center my bag tag on the pocket just below the flap. So honestly, I just kind of eyeball this. You could definitely find the midpoints and everything. And then I just have to mark the slits, I'm trying to keep it all as straight as possible. If you want, just use some rulers here. Now I'm going to let this go through both layers of my pocket. I know not everybody wants to do that, but um, I'm okay with it. So I'm going through just the two layers of my pocket. I'm not going through the vinyl. And then I will insert the prongs to my bag tag through those. So that I can see inside there. And then I'll just add the metal backing and press open the prongs. So. I know that not everybody would wanna do that because it does make the prongs exposed on the inside of that pocket. You could always cover that with something as well. Or you could just find another place for your bag tag, but I really like the look of it right there and I like having the two layers of this exterior fabric. So totally up to you, but that's where I'm putting mine. Now you can add two snaps if you'd like or just one snap. In the picture she has just one snap, so let's do that. We're gonna center this. So I marked a dot that is centered on the flap and three quarters of an inch above the top edge of the flap. 
I'm gonna use the hole punch on my rivet press to punch a hole where that dot was marked. And now that I have that hole punched, I can use that hole to mark the placement on the pocket. So I'm just gonna put my pen inside of there. So when I flip this up, now I have the mark on the pocket piece. So I'm just gonna pull that out and punch a hole where that mark is. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab plastic cam snaps. Now, to be honest, I haven't always loved plastic snaps, and I think that was just because I was using the hand press and they would come undone. Since I'm using my rivet press and the die that goes with that, I've had a lot more luck. So I think I'm just gonna use white for this. So I need two caps and a male and a female end. I'm gonna put the male end on top, so all I have to do is take one cap and push it through the top hole, so that's the side we see. And on the inside of the flap, I'll put the male side. So now I can just grab the dies for my plastic snaps and insert that into my rivet press. And the cap part, so the smooth white part on the outside is gonna go down and the male end points up and then I'll just press down. There we go, I can repeat this with the other one. So now the smooth part goes inside the pocket. The female part will be on the top of the pocket just like that. And once again, I'll just press. You don't need to change the die or anything. Same dies work for male and female. And there you go. So when I snap it, it's nice and sturdy. Shouldn't come undone at all. Easy peasy. You could use that on the tote as well. So once we have the pocket all ready to go, let's do our darts. So on the back of the exteriors, we have our darts marked. And all you have to do is the edges that are curved, bring those in, fold it in half. When you fold it, it should pinch right at the top of your triangle. And if you look on the sides, these two straight lines should meet up. So you might have to kind of rotate a little bit. Just add some clips to hold it in place. And we're pinching this fabric right sides together. So you can do this for both of your exterior panels and both of your lining panels. Okay, once you have all of those darts pinned or clipped, let's just take this to the sewing machine and sew along the marked edges. So you're just sewing right along those straight lines from the bottom up to the top, back stitch at the top especially. Okay, so this vinyl was not having those darts. So what I did to help, because whenever I did one row of stitching, you could clearly see the stitches in the darts on the vinyl. Um, what I did was I went over it a few times and I lowered my stitch length to two millimeters and I just went a little bit forward, a little bit back, a little bit more forward, back, back. So back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Lots and lots of stitches. This vinyl is great for embroidery so it can really withstand a lot of stitches. You don't have to worry about it tearing or anything like that. So you can go ahead and put to the side your lining and extra pieces. Let's grab our zipper and get this ready. So now grab your zipper tab, you only have one here, and flip it so that it's right sides down. Fold the two short edges together, wrong sides together, and press. This is getting us a nice little midpoint line. Open it back up, take those short edges and fold them up to meet that midpoint fold that you just made, and press. And then you can fold the whole unit in half so you have a little hot dog bun. Now grab your zipper. If you're using zipper tape like me, we're focused on the end that will be closed when the zipper is closed. So when the zipper opens, this end opens. When the zipper closes, this end stays closed. So we wanna add the zipper tab to the end that stays closed. And you are more than welcome to add a zipper tab to both ends if you like. I know a lot of us do like that look and it's honestly just a little bit easier. So definitely feel free to add a zipper tab to the other end as well. You don't need this end to be open. Now on the open side, go ahead and separate your zipper. And let's measure down three quarters of an inch from the edge of our zipper tape and just mark a line in the seam allowance like that. Do this on both sides. Now pinch along that marked line, bringing the wrong sides of the zipper tape together wrong sides together and your zipper tape naturally just folds up and to the right. Just let it do that and we want to tuck it behind 
that pinched fold. So you should have a nice 90 degree angle here and the zipper tape looks nice and clean on the front. On the back you have a 45 degree diagonal line. Do the same thing on the other side. Pinch it right on that fold and just push that zipper tape back behind it and add a clip. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna baste right along the edge just to hold these zipper teeth back to the edge like that. And then you can also top stitch along the interior edge. You can top stitch along both the interior and exterior little folds on your zipper tab as well at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So after you have your zipper done, the goal is to have this about 10 inches long. So if you want, you can do the fold over part first and then measure the zipper so it's 10 inches and then add the zipper tab. Mine is just a little bit over 10 inches, but I think we'll be okay. So now grab your exterior front piece that has that pocket and lay it right side up. You should already have the midpoint marked on the top edge. Grab your zipper tape and let's mark the midpoint of the zipper tape as well. So you just go end to end and then I'll use my air racing marker to mark the midpoints. You can just mark this right in the seam allowance, so right on the edge. Now take your zipper and when the zipper is closed, the zipper pull should be on the left and lay it right side down, matching up the midpoint mark on your exterior panel with the midpoint mark on your zipper tape. Clip that midpoint first and then clip the rest of the sides. You should have about a half of an inch, maybe a little bit more space on the sides of your zipper. You can see the zipper tape doesn't extend all the way to the ends. That's intentional. Now let's take this to the sewing machine and just baste this down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, now grab one of your lining pieces and lay that right side down on top of the right side of your exterior on the back of your zipper and line that up with the top edge of your exterior panel and just clip together. Okay, now let's take this back to the sewing machine and sew along this top clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. So if you have any of your zipper tape or your zipper tab sticking out over the side, just trim those down. Now pull the lining panel back so it's wrong sides together with the exterior. And I'm going to just clip the bottom edges of the lining and exterior together just so I can keep it nice and straight by the zipper tape. Okay, now I'm gonna pull on my zipper tape just like this. And you wanna get this seam by the zipper tape as straight as possible. So it's a little tricky to do with the vinyl and the waterproof canvas. But just do your best to pull on that zipper, get it nice and straight, finger press. When top stitching, I'm only top stitching where the zipper tape is. So I'm not going to top stitch all the way to the ends. I'm only gonna top stitch where my zipper is. So I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and end of this and stop right at the zipper teeth. All right, there you go. Now you have the zipper touch to one side. We're just gonna repeat that with the other. So grab your other outer panel and let's find the top midpoint of this one. So lay your remaining outer panel right side up with that midpoint marked. Take the outer panel with the zipper and lay it right side down. Match up the midpoint on your zipper with the midpoint on that outer panel. Clip those together first. And then just clip your zipper to the top edge of your outer panel. Okay, now we can quickly baste along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that attached, grab your lining panel and lay your lining panel right side down over the back side of that zipper and line it up with the exterior panel, just like that. So now let's sew along this edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. like before if you have any zipper tape or if your zipper end over here is hanging off the side just trim it down and now let's pull our exterior and linings wrong sides together it might be easier for you to close the zipper here so I pin the bottoms of the exterior and the lining together 
just to try to keep it all straight. And then I'll just tug along the fabric around the zipper and finger press to get as straight a seam as possible. All right, now let's take this to the sewing machine and top stitch along this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, now let's open the zipper just a little bit more than halfway. Take your exterior panels and pull those right sides together and take your lining panels right sides together. Up here at the top, push your zipper towards the lining side so the seams and the seam allowance go down towards the exterior side. And just clip those sides first and then we'll clip the rest of it. Okay, now we can go around this entire thing clipping these together. I'm actually going to just kind of trim down this dart a little bit. So I'm just opening up that fold just a little bit. That just allows it to lay a little bit flatter. So you can see the fold for me, it's much thicker than if I clip it and allow it to be just a bit flatter. This will help when I'm sewing over that since I am using a domestic machine. Okay, so I just opened up those darts just a little bit. I didn't cut down the whole edge, just enough for the seam allowance. So I'm gonna push the darts together and I'm just gonna fold them in opposite directions. That way those seams can kind of nest into one another and get really tight. I'm gonna put a clip there. Do the same on the other and I'm just working on the exterior side right now. And then clip around the entire edge of your exterior fabric, keeping them right sides together. Now we're gonna do the same thing for the lining. So line up those darts, rotate them in opposite directions and then clip along all the edges to hold it in place. Now before we get started, let's mark a four inch opening on the bottom edge of your lining. And this will be what we use to turn it all out in the end. Okay, now when we sew this, for the lining, I'm gonna sew this at 5 8 inch seam allowance. Once I get up towards this seam right here, I'm gonna decrease the seam allowance to a half of an inch or as close as I can get to my zipper tab or the end of my zipper. So I can feel where my zipper is. You could also mark on the back here with your pen. You wanna get as close as you can without actually stitching on the zipper tab or the zipper itself. So you just wanna get nice and close. And then on the exterior, I'm gonna go around at a half of an inch seam allowance all the way to the other side. And then once I get into the lining again, I'll increase my seam allowance to a 5 8 inch seam allowance all the way to the end backstitch at the beginning and the end. I will be going over the exterior a second time with a smaller stitch, so like a two millimeter stitch length. I'll do that a second time on the exterior because this vinyl is so thick it will pull on it, especially up here around the seams where it's a little bit more bulky. There we go. So now I'm going to just trim down the seam allowance around the lining and the exterior to a quarter of an inch, so about halfway through. Um, leave the seam allowance along this opening over here in the lining. Don't cut that down. It'll make it easier to close in the end if you leave it. But I will trim down the seam allowance just a bit on the exterior and the lining. Be careful when you're going through all this. You don't want to accidentally cut your stitches. All right, once it's all trimmed down, let's turn this out. I can tell you right now, this hole should have been bigger. All right, once you have that all turned out, like I said, you're using vinyl, uh, learn from my mistake. Also, I forgot to notch the curves. So if you need to, you can take some scissors and just kind of very gently put them in there to notch the curves around the edge here. I'm okay with how it looks, um, but that's a good thing to do before you turn it out. Okay, so let's push out the lining as well, just to get it nice and straight. So now you see we have a small opening here. You can just fold in those edges and just kind of tug along the top of your lining and clip it together. And now all we have to do is top stitch along this edge to close up that hole. Okay, now just take your lining and push it in to the center of your bag. Tell you, I love using vinyl and waterproof canvas, but there are times when it can be very difficult, usually during turning out a bag. 
And there you go, look at this adorable little pouch. And you could definitely add a strap tab here, you could add a D-ring to make this a wristlet. I like my pouches just kind of basic like this, but you can get very creative with this shape and this design, and it does not take very long to put together. All right, guys, let's look at our bags. This, this was one of my most fun bags I've ever made. This is, this is a favorite, favorite of mine. Look how fun this is with the snacks and the pink. I mean, this bag, can you imagine? You take this to Disney World, you take it to Disneyland one day, and you can just fill it up with all your goodies. Ah, oh, this bag is gorgeous. So if you wanted to make this bag and you're kind of new to bag making, you're new to thicker material, I would, I would practice this bag first using some quilt cotton, using some faux leather, something a little bit thinner before you work with thicker vinyl like this. But if you do wanna work with a thicker vinyl, it works. It works so well. This is such a professional look. And these clean lines, that's what I just love about noodle head patterns. The clean two-tone lines, the pocket, it's just, of course I make it very wild compared to the pictures in the pattern, but you can do that. You can make it extremely chic using solids, using, you know, wax canvas, things like that, faux leather, or you can just you can just go and have a great time like I do and use all of the wild fabric you have. Love, love, love this bag. Let me just show it to you on real quick so you can see the size. Okay, so here's the bag on. You can see I'm five foot four, just average build, medium build. So here we go, it, it hangs really nice. There's really no need for an adjustable strap on this bag. I know some of you guys are gonna ask about that. Since it's such a big tote bag, you really don't want the adjustable strap because honestly, if this part's hitting at your hip, this part's gonna be down at your knee and then you're just like kicking it while you're walking. So I would suggest sticking with the straps. These are great lengths. It's just, it's just a great bag. My mom is gonna take this bag, I just know it. And now let's look at the pouch that goes with it. Oh my gosh, again, the vinyl, you guys, the vinyl. I am just smitten with this pouch and it just feels so professional. Oh, goosebumps. It's a goosebumps type of pattern. I hope you guys love this. Have fun with it. Let me know what you use to make it. Are you using quilt cotton? I highly encourage you start with thinner fabric if you're new to sewing. If you're ready to dive in though with the leather, with the big thick vinyl, let me know. I wanna know how it turns out. So make sure you post your pictures of all of your makes using the hashtag Oakleroots Toots. Don't forget to tag Noodlehead in those posts as well so she can see what you're making and how much you love her patterns. If you don't have social media and you wanna show me your makes, you can email me, I'm jessica at oakleroots.com. Thank you so much for sewing with me today. I hope you love this pattern as much as I do. I hope you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of the week. Get out there and make something.